I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about she pretty much vanished. It is what it feels like. Yeah, like a ghoster. Yeah. Right? Just disappearing. Yeah, and it's crazy how people can come into your lives and say they want commitment and they wanna marry you and have kids with you, and then they walk away so easily. Small things that leave you feeling like hurt and devastated and sad and confused and a lot of times you're blaming yourself mm -hmm. and it's really about them and their own issues yeah and we as humans we do have that tendency when we don't have an answer or an explanation to say that it must have been our fault you might find yourself spiraling in your mind trying to find the exact moment the exact thing you did or the exact or didn't do right right or thing about you that caused them to distance but you're right sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with you at all yep so we've got an email coaching today that we thought you would enjoy um so this is from a guy who's in his late 20s and with a woman in her late 20s he says they both work at the same place i won't share what because it'll pretty much give it away mm -hmm. <laughs> um <clears throat> but they had previously dated for about a month back in 2019. The issues were mainly that we rushed into it and I didn't feel comfortable in the relationship due to her possessiveness, so I broke it off. For four years, now this is interesting, mm. for four years she tried to come into my life, but I rejected her every time due to my prior intuitions. I'm guessing because of the possessiveness. Yeah. Right? And those are important things to consider. You know, when you see early on already these orange flags or red flags, they're important to consider. Yep. So it sounds like he set a boundary back then. Four years later, lots can change in four years. So it sounds like maybe he might be giving it another try. Yeah, I know, but she was persistent for four years. I That's mean, she kept time. trying. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Mm. We had remained friends, telling each other about our dating issues and all that. So I said some pretty unattractive stuff to her in general. This included, I'll never have a girlfriend and I have no friends. Mm. So those really feel like they're coming from a depressed place, low self-esteem. Um, and yet she kept pursuing him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She saw he had these issues and it sounds like she, despite him being completely open about, oh, I don't have friends, I don't, I'll never have a girlfriend. And isn't that interesting to imagine telling a girl that likes you, I'll never have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you can imagine how frustrated she must have felt, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm right here, hello. Like, I'm <laughs> literally pursuing you and you're saying you won't have yeah. a girlfriend. Uh, that would that would be really frustrating, I would think, mm. from her. But it's interesting that he's already deeming these phrases as unattractive. You know, it seems like at that moment he's let go of the idea of a relationship happening with her, so he's able to be more vulnerable versus if he was attracted to her wanting a relationship to work at that time, yeah. he probably would have been a lot more guarded, which is interesting how that works. Yeah, yeah, sure, because he, he didn't care how it went. Mm -hmm so he was just telling her whatever and what he was thinking you know it sounded like those were coming from an authentic place mm -hmm. so let's see what happens I even made the mistake of sleeping with one of her friends I mean at the time if he wasn't it, about it then it may have been a little bit mean if he knew yeah yeah I could see that right you know that she still liked him mm -hmm. and she and he still hooked up with the friends I mean he has the right to do it but you know, if you care about somebody, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It also sounds like maybe her possessiveness might have...
played into that. You know, there might have been a you don't own me, you don't control me <laughs> type of situation happening there. But, you know, when he's acting like he can't get anybody or nobody's interested in him, it may have also just been like, oh, I'm just going to hook up with somebody because someone will have me. Yeah, or because they were showing interest at all. Yep. Mm. Nonetheless, she persisted, and this spring, I decided to give it another chance. Things went very well for around two months, and at the beginning, we had discussed boundaries and relationship stuff right out the gate. You would think that those kind of conversations would have been happening a little bit here and there along the last four years. Yeah. And that all of a sudden, when he decides, I'll give this another chance, but okay. Sense. She also mentioned that she was trying to heal from a previous relationship where the guy was abusive, and that was a, over a year ago. So it was a while. Mm -hmm. Coworkers were asking if we were back together based on how she and I were interacting. During the last week of the whole thing, she canceled a date on a Wednesday, but offered a counter on Tuesday, which I agreed to. All right, so I don't know if she gave a reason. She doesn't necessarily have to, but it's nice if you give somebody a reason. I can't do it because this came up, but how about this other day? She did give a counter offer, so that was, you know, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? it sounds like she's showing some effort in wanting to see him and giving a date and time. Mm -hmm. The next day, however, my depression flared up. Mm. It sounds like a bad case of hemorrhoids or something. <laughs> or like eczema right? or something. <laughs> <laughs> my depression flared up. It can happen that way, though. I understand. I'm in the worst bout of that that I've ever endured at wow. the moment. Okay, so... I suspected that there was some kind of correlation between her canceling the date and then him all of a sudden feeling depressed. Mm. Something happened there, I think. Yeah. Maybe he felt guilty that he had done something wrong to turn her off and that's why she canceled the date. And that's why he started to feel depressed about the situation. Well, also people who do experience depression also have rejection sensitivity, meaning that they are a lot more impacted when somebody does say no or when something does feel like a rejection. So I can imagine her canceling, even if there was a counter offer, mm -hmm. might have felt like a little, like a mini rejection. Yeah. You know, and who knows, there could have also been an anniversary reaction that was happening at that time. You know, almost anything can be a trigger when we've experienced drama or some type of past wound so it feels somehow correlated though because mm -hmm. he's saying this is the worst bout of depression ever and it's like literally the day after she cancels the date mm -hmm. so i don't know something's there mm -hmm. he, he should explore that she sent a snapchat where she got her hair done and i forgot to respond forgot I don't know if he was in his worst doubt of depression, you know, some people even struggle to get up to take a shower. So I can imagine texting back people and being diligent with that can also be a challenge. It, yeah, it's possible. Mm. He says, which was stupid. She then texted me asking how my day was going, where I made sure to tell her that her hair looked great. But after a few more messages, she could tell something was off. Okay, well. He was feeling depressed and maybe he was unconsciously wanting her to know that, that he was, something was bothering him mm -hmm. and so he was acting a little different. Maybe, yeah. I told her what was going on because based on where things were headed, she was going to find out eventually. Okay, so I guess he was going to tell her that he mm -hmm. was depressed. She seemed supportive and things seemed normal after this. But two days after I revealed this to her, she pretty much vanished. She also canceled the next date. Mm. This is interesting, right? This is interesting, given that they were friends for so long. Yeah. And given that he had been vulnerable with her about other things in the past. <sighs> Maybe he said something that scared her. It could have been the way that he presented it also. We just did a video on communication and how the way that you share information can be even more important than the message itself sometimes. Yep. So this could have been presented in a way of, I have this thing that's you know, really overbearing to me right now. It could have been 
If it was as severe as he had mentioned, it might have been even suicidality, which can be really scary for some people. You know, we don't know the yeah. content or how he shared that information, which can be really important. Yeah, exactly. So, but we don't. So we don't really know what was said there, but there seems to be something with what was said and her just disappearing, right? Mm -hmm. And I can already feel the shock that he must be experiencing. So in his mind, you know, this girl has stuck around for four years. He's slept with her best friend. There's plenty of reasons why she could have and would have left already, mm -hmm. but hasn't. And so this being just something that he's going through, him sharing that piece of vulnerability, being the thing where she draws the line is really strange. It is, it really is. He says, I am filled with painful regret at the moment because I had her once and I threw what we had away like nothing. I want to comment on that really quickly too, because this is also really common with depression is that you do become very past oriented. Sometimes people with depression have this feeling that I've peaked. I've already hit the best possible version of myself that I could be. And that was in the past. Everything is downhill from here. And so what can happen sometimes in relationships is you look back at your past, at your exes, and almost idealize them. Like those were the moments where I felt happiness and those will be the only moments that I feel happiness. Yep. So in the context of he's the most depressed that he's been or ever been, these types of thoughts make sense. And yep. it doesn't mean that they're necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I think at the time, for whatever reason, he felt like it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. All right. I even named her dog four years ago. That's a very odd thing to say <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> he just throws that in there. It doesn't really follow any thought here. Well, dogs are like children now, so. <laughs> I had to unfollow her on Instagram because it hurts too much to see her in general. And I do hope that she comes back eventually. She left me with, I'll text you soon with a heart, which was odd. It is odd. That is odd. All of us find this odd. Yeah. There's a consensus here. <laughs> this was two weeks ago as of my writing this email. I'm continuing to date other women and leave my options in the meantime. My question is, is it better to keep things like a depression a secret or do I did the right thing in telling her straight up? This is an awesome question. I just want to thank him for being really vulnerable and writing this email out and sharing his experience with mental health struggles. And I think it's really important for more men to be open and honest. It is something that men and women battle with all of the time. And I think the more that it can be open and out there, the more we have to work with. Yeah. So I just want to thank him for writing this email from the get go. That in itself is an act of advocacy for men's mental health. I think with, with anything, when you're opening them up about something, too much can be too overwhelming. Soon, yeah, in, in the early stages. But the odd thing is that she's known him for four years. She should know some of these issues. Mm -hmm. It's not like she couldn't possibly be blindsided by all of this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, not if they were really friends. That's what I'm also thinking. You know, there was a foundational friendship here, which for many relationships, that's a really healthy start to be able to have that vulnerability and really know a person as a friend before it gets romantic. That's you know one of the best ways to enter into a relationship in more, most secure ways. Yeah. And so for her to suddenly shift once things became romantic is very strange, especially since she's been pursuing him for years and years. There's just a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. I believe that honesty is the best policy in relationships. But it's also apparent that it comes across as weakness for men. I fear that this is what pushed her away. Well, it could have scared her. Okay. I mean, it is possible that she was overwhelmed. We don't know what he told her mm -hmm. or didn't tell her. Perhaps if he did say he was suicidal, that could have scared her. We don't know if that was the case. Um, so we can't say that it's not correlated somehow because... Timing wise, it does seem like something was there. Mm -hmm. That being said, if you're going to have a healthy relationship with somebody, you got to have some opening up and sharing of who you are and your issues you have and the things that you struggle with. Mm -hmm. And if they're not, if they don't really care about you enough to work through those things, then how's it going to work 
whatever the issues are. Yeah, long term. You know, you have to think, is this relationship sustainable if I don't share this piece of information? And I agree with him. Honesty is the best policy in this type of situation. You want to make sure that your partner or potential partner has all the information that, that they need in order to consent to that type of relationship. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you wouldn't want to date somebody and then, you know, months in find out that they have been diagnosed with a certain disorder or are struggling with mental health or have some sort of issue. You know, it's best to know that from the get-go to know what you're getting into. Yeah. But you take the risk with anybody mm -hmm. of do they get scared? Do they leave? Do they walk away? Mm -hmm. So you got to find the balance. But w the biggest thing that's confusing about her behavior is very confusing. Mm, I agree. They've known each other for four years. They dated previously. She must know him. She must know some of his issues. Why is she walking away? Why is she texting him? I'll contact you shortly with a heart. And then she doesn't for weeks later. I get the feeling there's probably somebody else in the picture. That's a possibility. I also want to note that people act very differently in relationships than they do in friendships. Some people can show up better for a friend than they can a partner. Mm -hmm. And we've all heard that quote that we hurt the people that we love the most. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when there's a romantic theme or romantic undertone in something, it can really be scary in and of itself. So where she might have had the capacity to be there for you emotionally as a friend as you're dealing with depression, she might in her mind have thought, this is going to be too much for me in a relationship. What I find a little suspicious is that she was still struggling to get over an ex that was from over a year ago. Hmm. Abusive ex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what's going on there. It's a good point. Um, is she in contact with that guy you didn't know about it? Did he suddenly find out that you and her were dating and he got jealous and he came back around again. Now all of a sudden he realized he lost her and he mm -hmm. came back. Something like that could have come up. But it is very unusual the way she handled this. And so you got to be careful. Yeah. I am also curious about the work situation too. If they do continue to see each other at work, how she interacts around him, if they do have a chance to speak at work. Or if they don't, you know, I do think that plays into it. He didn't mention that at all. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I'd just be curious to see what happened after that. Yeah. You know, but I think he should be considering his own mental health and if a partner really can, can be there for him. You know, at this point, her not reaching out to you, her not interacting, that right there is sending you a message about where she's at right now. Yeah. Yeah, and so leave her alone. I know it's hard. You guys were friends, but, you know, she kind of vanished on you. You didn't do anything wrong here. And, you know, you don't want to chase somebody. You need to leave her be to let her figure out what's going on with mm -hmm. herself. I think at some point she's going to come back and talk to him at least and tell him why she disappeared. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's interested in another guy or the ex is somehow in the background or she was scared by his depression i do think he's going to get some answers though i do think eventually you know if she was a friend and being there for over four years you know, that's a significant amount of time to invest in a person yeah i do also want to just give a tad bit of advice too if you are struggling with a mental health issue or if there is some type of information that you think is important for a partner or a potential partner to know it can be really helpful to be ready with educational materials with some resources just with some knowledge about what you are struggling with to present to them to help destigmatize to help educate them so you're not just out the box saying yeah, I have major depressive disorder and they already have all these ideas of what that means to them with all of the stigma attached to them. It's much better to be prepared and say, hey, these are some of the symptoms. This is how it presents in me. This is what it might be like for me as a partner. Mm -hmm. um, and these are the ways that you know we would be able to make this work. 
So just having some information about what you're dealing with before presenting might make it a little bit more digestible. Yeah. Of course, there's gonna be some people who just aren't up for the ride and that's okay. You want a partner who will be able to be alongside of you, who will be able to be supportive of you with what you're going through. Yeah. I think maybe she got overwhelmed, but you know, it's hard to know because we don't know exactly what he told her and how overwhelming that might be for somebody. But he, he didn't do anything wrong. If mm -hmm. you feel like he did something wrong, and I do think he feels like he did something wrong, yeah. I don't think he did anything wrong. You've known her for four years. I don't know what you said to her, but I would think after being friends with somebody for four years, you could be relatively honest with them, especially mm -hmm. with something like that. Yeah, I so, agree. So don't beat yourself up. Just leave her alone for now. Let her figure out what's going on with herself. I, I do think she'll come back at least as a friend and open up and tell you what's happened or what's going on or why she withdrew. It may take her a little bit of time to do that. And it's not easy to sit with that uncertainty, but that's what I would do. And personally, if I were you, I'd be a little bit offended that somebody said, I'll text you later and then haven't for weeks. Yeah. You know, I would be hurt by that and questioning our friendship. So I think you have a right to feel the way that you feel, um, but I think you should be proud of yourself for trying to be the most transparent version of yourself and letting her know what's been going on with you. I don't think that's anything to be ashamed of or showing any type of weakness. You want a partner who will be there for you. Yeah, and also work on your mental health. Get yourself a local therapist, mm -hmm. get evaluated, see what's going on. It sounds like you've had a history of depression here and you wanna you know, get some extra help when you're dealing with a situation like that. Exactly, and it could be helpful to also share that with a partner, potential partner. These are the treatments that I'm involved with and these are the things that I'm doing to better my situation. All right, tough situation, very confusing mm -hmm. behavior on her part, mm -hmm. but you could see why he'd be upset, but it wasn't your fault. Mm -hmm. So leave her be, see how things go, get yourself in a good place in the meantime. If you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.